Welcome to my idea worth spreading TED Talk sort of presentation. So when I officially first started thinking about theology and religion, I imagined a vast sea of different experiences and beliefs. I thought there would be great similarities, but also greater differences between schools of thought and practice. But I actually learned coming out of this semester that this wasn't the case. In fact, I ended up viewing what I learned not as teachings or beliefs or practices at all. They were all stories. Stories from different people of different teachings or beliefs or practices from people all over the world of different faiths. Stories of hope, faith, turmoil, love, and all sorts of things in between. Some were true, others aren't so certain. Some were literal, others figurative. So everything was built around stories. But as I continued to read and reflect, I realized that there weren't many stories at all. In fact, what I believed to be sets of several different stories all boiled down to this. One story. As you can see, it's not that big, certainly isn't too complicated, but it is old. It's a story as old as perhaps time itself. And what is this one story, you may ask? You will be tested. You are going to be tested in life at several points. Everyone at some point in their lives will face some great test, whether that be a faith, a fortitude, a will, sort of a great, I don't know, saving throw, if you will. Life will make you roll the dice, and sometimes you won't know how to react. But that's okay. Because it doesn't matter if your test is hard, or you've had to face several of them, or they seem insanely insurmountable, you will make it through. So allow me to walk you through some examples that have led me to this conclusion. I promise we'll start off easy and then we'll get more intricate the further. One great example of being tested can always be found in comic books. I'm a huge comic book fan, have been since the day I was born. And one of the greatest superhero origin stories to have ever been told is Batman. We all know the classic parents killed in alleyway side of the story, but what I like in particular about Christopher Nolan's portrayal in his 2005 adaptation Batman Begins is his incorporation of this well scene towards the beginning. For those that haven't seen the movie yet, please do, it's amazing. But what happens is that one day young Bruce Wayne and his friend Rachel Dawes are running around the grounds of Wayne Manor when Bruce accidentally slips and falls down an abandoned well shaft. Bruce is seemingly fine until a swarm of bats then emerges from a cave and terrorizes him. This leaves the young Bruce traumatized with bats and shaking very badly until his dad comes to the rescue and grabs him from the bottom of the well. When he reaches his son, Thomas Wayne looks at his son in the eye and asks, why did we fall? So we can learn to pick ourselves up. When life decides to test you, all that matters is how you react. Even in failure, we can learn from our mistakes and keep moving forward. Let's take a look at another example. In his book, Discipline Equals Freedom, Retired Navy SEAL Jocko Willink explores several different aspects of discipline that he believes can triumph over any personal issue. These small paragraphs of wisdom often pertain to self-defining concepts that help the mind triumph over the body. Many of these excerpts often deal with the ability to overcome laziness, selfishness, cowardice, etc. One such excerpt, titled Overwhelmed, has this to say about life. Yes, life can be overwhelming. That's the way life works. It is testing you. It is going to throw problems at you, and it is going to throw them at you all at the same time. But let me tell you, that does not mean give up fighting. In fact, it means the opposite. It is time for you to fight harder, to dig in, to go on the warpath. Do not let them bring you down. Instead, let these challenges raise you up. Let them elevate you. So in the future, you look back at these struggles, and you say to them, thank you. You made me better. Even though you don't always have to be so aggressive in the approach, what he says about life is true. It is going to test you. It is going to be hard, and it is not going to let up. But we only lose when we stop trying. We only lose when we give up and fail to learn from our mistakes. We only lose when we refuse to pick ourselves back up. Let's look at an example closer to what we talked about in class. In Reverend Renita Williams' book, Listening for God, she details her tests of faith with God. She explains that despite typically being strong in faith, she found herself wavering in ways that made her question whether she was still connected with God. In a chapter titled, Surrender to the Silence, she details how she had lost excitement and almost a sense of purpose in her everyday tasks, being a mom, a preacher, a writer, and a scholar. She explains how, despite her many attempts to stay spiritually motivated, she came up short of feeling the energy she had expected. Eventually, she came to a conclusion. She was going to accept the silence. She learned that sometimes 
You can't always be so demanding of yourself, of your faith, to fulfill your life. You need to accept the fact that there will be hard times, boring times, confusing times, and even times when you will question your faith. But eventually you will return. She says, quote, Eventually we all have to accept that dying and rising, freezing and thawing, resting and rebounding, sleeping and awakening are the necessary conditions for all growth and creativity. Even in faith, you can and will be tested, and that's okay. You are not expected to always have this perfect unity with God, to be the shining beacon of holy righteousness. What matters is that you keep your beliefs, you keep trying, and you hold on. No matter what, as long as you hold on to your belief or your convictions, they will return in time, just as the spring always returns in the winter. After the winter, sorry. We also see this idea of being tested several times throughout the Bible. When Abraham, one of God's most loyal servants, asks for God's wisdom, he is only met with one command. In Genesis 22, God commands Abraham, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. God deliberately tests Abraham's faith at a seemingly impossible cost. He asks Abraham for his son, his only son, for which he is, his wife and he had been trying so desperately to conceive, and he asks him to offer him up with out of reverence to God. Abraham, despite knowing the price he has to pay, set out to fulfill God's command. Abraham bound his son Isaac and prepared to offer him to the Lord as he was commanded. As he was about to sacrifice his son, an angel descended from the heavens and commanded Abraham to stop, for he had shown his fear and reverence to God, and need not actually fulfill the sacrifice. For God, it, for God, it wasn't about the completion of the test. It was about Abraham's will to go through with it. It was about the journey, not the destination. God was testing Abraham, and though it was a terribly difficult task, Abraham proved he was willing to sacrifice it all to pass his test. We see a similar, yet albeit worse, fate of fall Job. Job was a simple man, living in fear of God. The Bible even describes him as, quote, the greatest man among all the people in the East. Throughout the book of Job, God tests him over and over again, wondering if his most loyal servant would eventually curse his name. God gave Satan dominion over all of Job's life, except the actual man. When th with this, he took his herd, his servants, his children, his house. Satan tormented Job at every turn. But Job refused to curse God. Even after Satan is given power to strike the man, Job refused to curse the name of the Lord. Job eventually procla proclaims, quote, Blessed is the one whom God corrects, so do not despise the discipline of the Almighty. For he wounds, but he also binds up. He injures, but his hands also heal. Job, Job understands the purpose of being punished. God was testing him. Job understands that faith can and will be tested, and to maintain his duty to God, he would have to endure. He would have to dig in and continue to push forward, despite many people telling him to give in to the temptation. Job was tested to show his faith, and he packed, because he didn't give in. He kept on trying. So I started off this presentation by saying that you will be tested in life. And it's true. There will be plenty of tests. Tests of will, tests of strength, tests of faith. It just doesn't seem right, in fact, if you aren't tested. In fact, this whole presentation has been sort of a test. See, the one message worth spreading isn't that you will be tested. It's that it's okay to be tested. You see, life isn't necessarily about success, but about growth. It's about learning how to better be better than you were. Whether that means learning to pick yourself back up, to dig in and work harder, to hold out until the light comes, or to prove your faith and endure. You can and you will do it. You only need to try. And as long as you don't quit, you will.